Yeah. Random discussion show. Lorenzo Tomas here. It is the second Wednesday of January. You know what that means. It's time for Black Myths and Folklore Part 3. Oh, yeah. Before we get to that, make sure you guys go and check out that Random Radio podcast show up right now at YouTube and SoundCloud, uh, playing some of the hottest artists of the underground and independent scene. Make sure that you guys go and check our show out. Uh, make sure you guys go check out the Random Radio compilation album, part two, up at YouTube and SoundCloud right now. All right. Make sure you guys go check out the Random Radio Awards also. That's up too. All right. So right now, let's get to the discussion. This is a good one today. This is a myth that many African Americans have believed because it has been passed down for ages. We're going to talk about Mr. William, Mr. Lynch. William Lynch. Yeah, there's no picture, so RDP doesn't have any pictures to put up. William Lynch. Mm Mm-hmm. Wooly Lynch. Yeah. So many people, so let's, let's just start with what has been told about William Lynch. Apparently, according to African American theorists, uh, Willie Lynch is a man, a British, a British slave owner, uh, who gave an address to the people of Virginia in 1712 on December 25th, 1712, explaining to them about how they can control their slaves. Okay. Now, according to Wikipedia, let's go with Wikipedia real quick. Let's just go with Wikipedia and what they're saying about Willie Lynch, because that's really all we have. We have nothing else. Uh, Wikipedia says the William Lynch speech is an address reported purportedly delivered by a certain William Lynch or Willie Lynch to an audience of the bank on the bank of the James River in Virginia in 1712 regarding control of slaves within colonies. It is considered to be a hoax says it right there it is considered to be a hoax the letter purports to be a verbatim account of a short speech given by a slave owner in which he tells other slave masters that he has discovered the secret to controlling black slaves by getting them to go against one another the document has been in print since at least 1970 but first gained widespread notice in the 1990s when it appeared on the internet Since then, it has often been promoted as an authentic account of slavery during the 18th century, though its inaccuracies and anachronisms have led historians to conclude that it is a hoax. All right, so let's start out with some things that blacks say about Willie Lynch that are just not true. So first of all, Willie Lynch himself, in 1712, um, he went to Virginia and he gave this speech. Apparently, he owned slaves in the British Isles, the British West Indies, as they um, were once called. Uh, so apparently, he went over there. He owned a couple of slaves, and then he came to America to tell them how to control their slaves because, according to the old myth, the slaves were just out of control. One thing that is said about Willie Lynch that's just not true is that the term lynching comes from him. He created the idea of lynching people. Well, here's, here's the problem with that. So there's there's a lot of different etymologies of lynching, and uh, the word is very obscure. Some people think that it comes from Lynch's Law, uh, which was a term for a punishment without a trial. Uh, and that, that actually comes from around the American Revolution time. Uh, two Americans during this era are generally credited for inventing the phrase Lynch, Charles Lynch, and William Lynch. Now, this is not the same William Lynch. This is a different William Lynch. Now, let me me get back to this. Who both lived in Virginia in the 1780s. Charles Lynch has the better claim, as he is known to have used the term in 1782, while William Lynch isn't known to have used the term until much later. There is no evidence that death is imposed as a punishment by either of the two men. In 1782, Charles Lynch wrote that his assistant had administered Lynch's law to Tories, for dealing 
with Negroes. Mm. So these were white people. Tories are white people. Uh, they are not blacks. Uh, so they were lynching blacks. They were, they were lynching whites. Whites uh, who were representing the British crown during the Revolutionary War. They were lynched for dealing with the Negro kind. Okay. So Charles Lynch was a judge, lived from 1736 to 1796, which means that he would have came after the supposed Woolly Lynch of 1712. Uh, William Lynch, supposedly Lynch Law, uh, lived in 1742 in 1820. So he also couldn't have been the William Lynch that gave the speech in 1712. Um, so there's some, there, there's a problem there. We got a problem there. So who is William Lynch? Who is he? Where, where does this story come from? Why? What is the Wooly Lynch letter? Let's, let's, let's go through a couple of things in the Wooly Lynch letter, right? So, so here, here I'm, it, it's, it's really, really long. I have the link to the letter in the, in the comment section. Uh, I mean, in the, in the information section because it's really long. So the first part of this, of the first part of it is uh, talking about making a slave. Uh, cardinal principles for making a Negro. Uh, the breaking process of the African-American woman. The, uh, the nigger marriage, uh, possible interloping negatives, controlling of the language. Uh, it has various other things within here about crossbreeding and taking Negroes and mating them together to create other Negroes and then putting Negroes against each other for the sake of controlling the blacks. Now, many black people have said, you know, this is the reason why black people are the way they are. This is the reason why we have so much hatred towards each other. This is the reason why we, you know, have, have issues with lighter skinned Negroes. This is what created the house Negro field Negro syndrome, as many African Americans believe exists. This, this is where everybody gets all of these different um, theories from. I mean, in, in all actuality, you don't need a woolly lynch to control slaves. Slavery has existed geez, since the beginning of man. Slavery and prostitution may be two of the oldest, uh, two of the oldest practices in in history. So, slavery existed even in the Bible. There's slavery. So, who's the woolly lynch in in Moses' times? Who's the woolly lynch there? Right. So, when slavery was happening to the Africans on the eastern coast. And the Arabs were taking them. Who was the woolly lynch there? Who controlled those Africans? Who who was the woolly lynch that controlled the Slavs when they were slaves? Who was the woolly lynch? Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. Dividing people is you don't need to do that. That's a cultural evolution that will happen on its own. You don't you don't have to go in and divide them. The people will divide themselves. They will say to themselves that someone else is better than me because of A, B, or C, or I am inferior to someone because of A, B, and C. You don't really need to go in there and, and do anything. You really don't. They're going to do it to themselves. It's, it's going to happen. That is what is happening now. African Americans to this day don't even, it doesn't even matter if we look the same or come from the same place. Here in Chicago, if I'm black and I'm on your corner, you may shoot me because I am there. No, you don't even care that I'm black and that I look like you. We have the same skin tone. We might be cousins. You don't care. You're just going to shoot me. And so the thing is, is that, is that Willie Lynch? Is that some Woolly Lynch there? I, I don't, I don't, I don't think that all of these things are William Lynch. All right, so coming up after the break, well, we got some music here from Random Battle winner Steve Everett. He won the Random Battle of the Week, so we're playing him this week. Now, coming up after the break, though, we're gonna have, we're gonna have some, uh, we're gonna look deeper into this discussion, right? We're gonna, we're gonna look deeper into Woolly Lynch. We're gonna figure out who wrote it. We're going to ask some hard-hitting questions about the Willie Lynch letter. If it's true, then why is it that? I'm going to tell you in a minute. My question in a minute. It's a great question that you guys you should answer. Uh, we're going we're gonna to review the history of slavery. We're going to also go over some different revolts that happened around 1712. And we're going to go through some revolts that happened afterwards. So if William Lynch really is true... Why didn't the Negro, why didn't, why didn't it work? We're going to talk about different things that led up to the possibility of William Lynch. And then we're going to talk about why do African Americans believe in William Lynch to begin with. All right, so right here, this is Steve Everett. The name of this song is called After Tonight, won the Random Battle of the Week. So now we're playing it here. You guys enjoyed this. Check out his music. He's got high music everywhere. SoundCloud, Facebook, YouTube, Reverb Nation. It's also on episodes of Random Radio. You guys enjoyed this. Steve Everett, after tonight, we'll be back with more black myths and folklore. It's Random Discussion. Don't even know 
I don't know you at all, but your eyes are alive And I'm already planning the next ten years of our lives after tonight I will sell my name if it meant that the sun would arise On tonight, tonight, yeah, tonight I'm no one for playing dumb when I know just what this could be What's up everyone, this is Taz the Artist. I am here to talk about the Random Radio Compilation Album Part 2. Random Radio Compilation Part 2 features some of the best artists that have been featured on Random Radio. It also features my song, Lose Control. I'm about to 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 lose control. Random Radio Compilation Part 2 is up at SoundCloud and YouTube. Go listen to it now. Support your boy. You are listening to Random Radio. Yeah. Do your mixes sound flat and lifeless? Does the crack of your snares hurt every time you turn your music up? Are your 808s floppy and lacking the bass you just know they should have? If so, it's time for you to hit up Artist Music Engineering to get your next single radio ready. Artist Music is a Pensado Award-nominated, full-service mixing and mastering company dedicated to making your song sound just as good as the pros. It doesn't matter if your music is hip-hop, pop, rock, EDM, or bluegrass. Artist Music will take your mix to the next level, allowing it to compete on an equal playing field with today's hits. So what are you waiting for? Contact us at www.soundcloud.com backslash engineering and get your singles sounding like hits today. Lorenzo Tomas here for the Random Discussion Show. Hey, are you an artist with some very strong political views? Are you an activist who is out there trying to clean up these streets with your words and with your actions? Contact us at rrpshow at gmail.com. We would love to have you on the Random Discussion Show. Let your opinion be heard. Voice your thoughts. Tell the people what you think. And don't be afraid to hear new ideas. Make sure that you hit us up at rrpshow at gmail.com today and schedule yourself an interview so that we can hook you up and put you on the show. By the way, did I mention it was free? Yeah, it cost you nothing. Just hit us up, rrpshow at gmail.com. Say you want to be scheduled for the random discussion show, we'll book you today. It's that simple. Let your voice be heard, man. Hit us up, rrpshow at gmail.com. Get on the random discussion show today. Hey, random radio. 
if you haven't done so yet, go follow us on Twitter at RRP Show. That's at RRP Show. Twitter at RRP Show. Random discussion. Uh, yeah, random discussion. Lorenzo Tomas here. Um, Black Myths and Folklore, part three of my never ending. I don't know how, how many of these episodes can we do? I mean, how many can we do? Uh, like this. We got this one. Wait, wait, we got HBCUs. We got Colin Kaepernick. We got this one. We're going to do the crack epidemic. <laughs> We're going to do the, the civil rights movement. We're going to do them all to educate black people. We're going to educate you. On your, on your heritage Learn more about yourself Understand who you are Where you come from What you believe Could be trash This is part of the reason Why white America Looks at you and says <laughs> Whatever So Black myths and folklore We're doing Willie Lynch this week You know you know, Let's um Let's read some of the Willie Lynch letters Shall we We're just We're gonna read a couple of excerpts And then we're gonna like You know skip through So let's go to um how about this? Let's go to the part that says, let's make a slave. Everyone's with us? No, I don't wait for you guys to get there with me. Okay, we're all ready? All right, it was the interest and business of slaveholders to study human nature and the slave nature in particular, but they view the practical results. All right, all right. Here we go, let's make us a slave. What do we need? First of all, we need a black nigger man, a pregnant nigger woman and her baby nigger boy. Second, we will use the same basic principle that we use in breaking a horse, combined with some more sustaining factors. What we do with horses is that we break them from one form of life to another. That is, that is, we reduce them from their natural state in nature, whereas nature provides them with the natural capacity to take care of their offspring. We break the natural string of independence from them and thereby create a dependency status so that we may be able to get from the useful production to get from them useful production from for our business and pleasure. Okay. So this this is Wooly Lynch telling the white man how to control his slave in 1712 by saying, let's make a slave. I want to take everyone back for a moment. I want to go back to something that many people talk about, but they seem to always forget. The Virginia Codes. The Virginia Slave Codes were created in 1705. Now, this is the same place that William Lynch was speaking at. This is seven years earlier. In 1705, the Virginia Slave Codes were created. You know, according to Wikipedia, the Virginia Slave Codes of 1705 were a series of laws enacted by the colony of Virginia regulating activities related to interactions between slave and citizens of the crown colony of virginia let's read some of these slave codes some of these slave the slave codes actually are establish new property rights for slave owners that was the purpose these the codes effectively embedded the idea of white supremacy into law and the following racial devices as well allow for the legal free trade of slaves with protections granted by the courts establish separate courts of trial Prohibited blacks, regardless of free status, from owning arms. Whites could not be employed by blacks. Allowed for the apprehension of suspected runaways. Now, after 1705, many of the states started adopting their own kind of slave codes. But Virginia is the first one. Now, many people are saying, see, racist. But this still has not Willie Lynch. This, this isn't Willie Lynch. I'm not saying it is not racist. It's very racist. But this is not Wooly Lynch. This is the House of Bur- of Burgesses in 1705. No Wooly Lynch a part of it. Okay? No Wooly Lynch needed. So if they already had this in place in 1705, what the hell did you need Wooly Lynch for in 1712? Moving on. Why did they establish this? According to Wikipedia, many of these laws were established so that whites and blacks, common whites and blacks could not form a unification like they did in the Bacon's Rebellion, which was 29 years prior. Now, many of you may not know about the Bacon's Rebellion. That's okay. I'm going to educate. I'm going to educate you and learn you something today. Uh, the Bacon's Rebellion was an armed rebellion in 1676 by Virginia settlers led by Nathaniel Bacon against the rule of Governor William Berkeley. Now, to make a long story short, Berkeley, uh, you know, was kind of being kind of, you know, 
not 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 the best governor doing some some illegal things well not illegal but doing some pretty you know uh underhanded things this led to a rebellion uh amongst um uh, uh this this led to a rebellion amongst uh many of the white slave owners and their enslaved uh in africans as well as indentured servants they were all running around with weapons and they were burdened down to Jamestown, Virginia. They were handling their business. They were handling their business. They were letting that governor know, we're not having this nonsense anymore. So the motives for the rebellion, the immediate cause of the rebellion was Governor William Berkeley's refusal to retaliate for a series of Native American attacks on frontier settlements. In addition, many colonists wished to attack and claim American Indian frontier and land westward, but they were denied permission by Governor Berkeley. So, that, so that, 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 that was what it was. And next thing you know, they had a big fight. Huge fight broke out. Uh, and, and when they did that, they, uh, uh, you know, there was a big thing. So, so the laws that got passed ended up being the Virginia Slave Code. And they, they were working on these for a while. They had slave codes earlier uh, that were kind of lenient. But then in Virginia, in 1705, the Virginia Slave Codes came and they were not playing anymore. Um, yeah. Uh, so right here, according to Wikipedia, it was the first rebellion in the American colonies in which dis discontented frontiersmen took part. A similar uprising in Maryland took place later that year. The alliance between indentured servants and Africans, most enslaved until death or free, united by their bond servitude, disturbed the ruling class, who responded by hardening the racial caste of slavery in an attempt to divide the two races from subsequent united uprisings with the passage of the Virginia Slave Codes of 1705. No Willie Lynch needed. None. No Willie Lynch needed. Before 1705, Virginia had a slave code in 1682. They also had a slave code in 1667. Maryland had a slave code in 1664. Virginia had a slave code in 1662, and they started their slave codes in 1639. Okay. That slave code in 1639 was all persons except the African slaves are to be provided with arms and ammunitions to be fired, to be fined at the pleasure of the governor and the council. South Carolina in 1712 made their, made a slave, some slave codes. No Willie Lynch needed. No Willie Lynch here at all. Sound like they were already controlling the slaves. Like they already had a system in place of controlling the slaves. Here's one. Here's one. Here's, here's, here's one that you might find pretty interesting. 1712, South Carolina slave codes. They said the rest, uh, where, where, where is it? Where, uh, ah, thought I had something, I didn't. Anyway, so let's go to violence against slaves. If you're looking at the slave codes page uh, on Wikipedia, you can go to the violence against slaves and you can see that um in 1712 ah that's where we were in 1712 south carolina had a slave code that said be it enacted by the authority for said that no master mistress overseer or other person whatsoever that hath the care and charge of any negro or slave shall give their negroes or other slaves leave to go out of their plantation every slave hereafter out of his master's plantation without a ticket or leave in writing from the master shall be whipped. No need for Willie Lynch. No need for Willie Lynch for that. 1705, Virginia. If any slave resists his master, correcting such a slave shall be shall shall happen to be killed in such correction. The master shall be free from all punishment as if such accident never happened. Where's Willie Lynch? 1705, that was the law. William Lynch comes, 1712, and apparently makes new laws. Really? Really? Come on, people. Are, are, you, are you not? Are, are you saying history's lying? History, history is now lying? Is history lying? History's making this up? These things didn't happen? So William Lynch gives this speech, right? He gives this speech. Everybody is so happy that Willie Lynch gave this speech. Yay, Willie Lynch. He's the man. Yeah, Willie Lynch could not stop the New York slave revolt of 1712. It didn't matter. Couldn't stop that, right? Even, well, 
in all fairness, the revolt happened in April. So, you know, William Lynch came supposedly in December, on Christmas, um, 1712. So, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe they didn't know William was coming to, you know, give some information. Maybe the New York revolt led to William Lynch coming, right? Maybe that's it. Maybe that's what happened. Maybe the, this revolt mixed in with all the other problems led to Willie Lynch's immediate coming over to tell the whites how to control the blacks. The New York Slave Revolt of 1712 was an uprising in New York City in the British province of New York of 23 enslaved Africans who killed nine whites and injured another six. More than three times that number of blacks, 70 were arrested and jailed. Of these, 27 were put on trial and 21 convicted and executed. Sounds like the whites, sounds like the whites took care of that problem, right? It's like they, they killed a lot of blacks to send a message. Why did you, did, did you really need William Lynch? Did you really need him? You need him? Come on. Come on, people. You really need William Lynch for what? All right, so there are, there are many websites that are talking about Willie Lynch that have, that have stated that, yes, it's true. Look at how we are today. Look at us. We are, we are, we are, uh, we are, we are, we are all... Look at how black people are today. Well, let's go to a little bit of history. Let's go to let's go to the history books themselves. Okay. Uh, the British colonies um, in the British area that used to control uh, the West Indies, the British West Indies, um, were established in 1627. Actually, they were not fully established until 17, uh, I believe it's 1711, maybe. Uh, let's see. The British, the uh, piracy became a serious concern for the British, and they had acquired the Bahama Islands back from the Lord proprietors, making the Bahamas a British crown colony for the first time in 1717. Uh, prior to that, they had already been in control of Bermuda in the 1640s. Uh, by 1670, the Bahama Islands were granted to the Lord proprietors of the province of Carolina. Uh, by the early 1700s, the Bahamas were largely known as a haven for pirates. Okay. Haven for pirates. Tons of tons of illegal activity going on. But you got this guy coming over. And but not to mention, you got a lot of revolts happening around this time in the West Indies. But, you know, you got, especially in the French West Indies. But now you have <laughs> William Lynch coming over to tell Americans what they should be doing. Okay, sure, sure. The history of slavery, right? And slavery goes back to the Mesopotamian codes. The first earliest traces of, of slave recordings is from the Mesopotamian codes of Hammurabi. That's 1860 BC. Who was the Woolly Lynch then? Huh? Who was the Woolly Lynch then? Who was the Woolly Lynch in the Byzantine Ottoman Empire? Who was that? Who was the Woolly Lynch then? Who was the Woolly Lynch during the Columbus exploration to America? Who was the Woolly Lynch then? Who was he? Tell me his name. Who was the Woolly Lynch in Mauritania? Mauritania had slavery all the way up until August of 2007. Who was the Woolly Lynch over there? Who was the Woolly Lynch who had when there was a slave trade in Denmark and Norway? All the way up until 1802. Who was the Woolly Lynch there? Right. I'm trying to just figure it out. You have all these traces of slavery. Who's the Willie Lynch in them? Who's telling the people to do the Willie Lynching? Huh? You know, he, he, here's a really good question. When Willie Lynch happened, you had a bunch of slave revolts that happened even afterwards. If you go and you look up slavery rebellions, there are tons of slavery rebellions that happened after the supposed Willie Lynch. I want to know. I want to know how. What it, what, did, 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 did the blacks just decide we're not? We're not listening to these to these foolish this foolishness that you guys are talking about? Right? You're not gonna do this? There was a slave rebellion, the Samba Rebellion, the Stono Rebellion, 1739, the New York Slave Insurrection of 1741, the Pointe Coupe Conspiracy 1794, the Igbo landing slave escapes 1803 a ponte conspiracy 1812 
George Boxley Rebellion, 1815, Nat Turner Slave Rebellion, 1831. You got all these slave rebellions. Huh? Huh? What's going on here, man? How do you have all these slave rebellions and you had all these whites who were doing all this, all this slavery? They were doing all this slavery. So I guess you're gonna tell me now, well, some slaves just, just had enough. They knew more. Okay, I'll give you that. I will give you that. I will give you that. Some slaves were like, you know what? I'm done with this. I had enough. I ask you this one question though. And I, and I think this is a solid question to ask. And I think I'm just gonna leave it here. If the Willie Lynch theory is real and the Willie Lynch letter is real, can you explain to me why, if the Willie Lynch letter is real, why no one knew about it until 1970? Why is it that we didn't start hearing about this Willie Lynch letter until the Nation of Islam presented it to us? Why is it that we didn't have, many people didn't even know about Willie Lynch until the Million Man March in the 90s? Hmm? Excuse me? Can someone tell me why didn't Martin Luther King ever talk about uh, Willie Lynch? Why didn't Jesse Jackson ever talk about Willie Lynch? He may have recently, but why, why didn't he talk about it before? Why didn't W.E.B. Du Bois, Marcus Garvey, Mega Evers, Malcolm X, Elijah Muhammad, Noble Drew Ali, Booker T. Washington, Ida B. Wells. Why didn't any of these people talk about this Willie Lynch? Frederick Douglass, no Willie Lynch. Nat Turner never even talked about a Willie Lynch. I'm just trying to figure out why is it that today we know of a Willie Lynch and we believe it because we have allowed ourselves to culturally hate each other. Do you really think that the problem is that a white man had to come and teach how to divide us? You think people don't divide themselves? Look at white people. White people divide themselves. So do we. There's no difference. Mexicans divide themselves. Some Mexicans, and it seems, and I understand, some Mexican communities are very close-knit. That's very understandable. But some Mexicans stay away from other Mexicans. It's not any, it's, it's a cultural thing. You're going to do it. You're going to do it. Here in America, we're all about being individuals and having our own and being in our own space. So of course we're going to do that. We want our own, we want to be able, and we always are looking at other people and talking about what we think they have. We're always doing this. Because we think, we think we know what's best for everybody. We also think that we know, we, 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 we want so much. And we're jealous of others without even realizing that we're jealous. And so we make up excuses for our own mishaps and our own problems. It's somebody else, it's somebody else. They did it, they did it, they did it. We did it, we divided ourselves. We looked at the color of our skin and said, hey, you think you white. It is some blacks who decided, hey, if I don't, if I act white and, and play and portray myself as white, if I pass, I'm better than these other blacks. You, we, we did that, no one white did that. They can plant the idea, but you do the actions. No one made you do that, you did that that's what you want to do. You, want, you all want to divide us. You all want a divide. You want to divide today. You want to divide between ghetto Negro and suburban Negro. You want to divide between educated Negro and uneducated Negro. You want to divide between thug Negro and unthug Negro. You want to divide between uh, the Negroes with jobs and Negroes without jobs, Republican Negroes, Democrat Negroes. If the whole purpose and goal of the black race is to look out for the black race, why is it that as soon as we don't agree on what it means to be black, you're no longer black. Your black card is taken from you. Are you telling me that that is not us dividing us? What white man gave you a black card to take away from me? Exactly. Make sure you guys leave some messages in the comment section. Let me know what you guys think. Tell me what you think. Why didn't those historians know about the Willie Lynch letter, but we know so much about it today? You really think somebody had to teach these people how to divide us? You really think that they didn't realize at some point they're gonna divide themselves? I mean, that that is a lot of power to give to one race of people. That is a lot of power to give them. And, and it also says that you think that black people are very, very inept or you think they're stupid, one or the other, I don't know. But 
I want to save this for last because this is the creme de la creme. If any of you are wondering, well, well then, Lorenzo, all of this is for what? what? What are you telling us all this for? What are you telling us all this for? I'm telling you this for a couple of reasons. One, stop believing myths about African Americans and how things got to the way they are. Start looking more into the, into the sociology of things. Stop, stop believing these myths. Look into that. But also, I want to show you something. I want to tell you who the true author of the Willie Lynch letter is, because that is what this all culminates to. And you, you do, you, you tell me what you think. As a brother, and, and I'm going to have the video link right in the, 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 the information section so that you guys can see this. This brother's name is Dr. Uh, Dr. Quabina, Quabina Ashanti. Uh, I don't know, he's probably some more. Uh, some nation of Islam, Muslim, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't know. But the bottom line is, is that he has admitted that he wrote this. He's, 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 he writes books. Another Alex Haley, he writes myths for Negroes to live by. And you all live by it. You all live by the theory that whites have divided you. They, sold, they, they treated your black man like horses. And that is the reason why we have no respect for them. That you believe that. And the truth of the matter is the black woman doesn't want to respect the black man today. She, she doesn't want to respect him because the government is not her, her husband. That is her black man. The reason the problem that we have with white and black, light skin, dark skin, you can thank your fraternities and your sororities for a lot of that nonsense there. But you, can thank, you can thank society for, uh, for, for believing that they needed, that black society for believing that they needed to pass in order to, to, to advance. You can blame white society, I guess, for accepting that standard, for create, for for making a standard of that of that nature. I'm, okay, I'm fine with that. I still think that African Americans, if we love each other and we care about each other so much, why didn't we say, "I'm not passing. I'm gonna help my own." I don't understand. But Doctor uh, Quabena Ashanti, well, he, he he'll tell you. He'll tell you he wrote it. He wrote it. And, and, and you know what? It just shows you something. You see how much damaging we are to each other than a white man could have ever been to us? You see how a brother wrote something, wrote a story that is false about a white man who never existed, and we believed it, and now we believe it to be true today. But it must, it must be true. Because look at us, right? Still not doing anything to, to, not to, to stop it from happening. We're not trying to reverse it at all. Just uh, blaming white folks. Random Radio. What's good, world? This your boy Twizzle White Face here to talk to you about the Random Radio Compilation Album Part 2. The Random Radio Compilation Album features some of the best rappers from past shows. It also features my song, The Random Symphony. Yes, it's me, T.Y.P. Big shout out, R.I.P. You don't like me, kiss the ring. You won't fight me, your sissy, your pissy. Full of envy, full of money's what my pockets be, and I'm rocking nonstop. Cop and guap, on and off the clock, see? Random Radio Compilation Album is available on YouTube and SoundCloud right now. So go listen, you won't be disappointed. And guess what? You're listening to Random Radio Podcast. The Rizzo Tomas here for Royal Skating Apparel. Royal Skating Apparel is where I get all of my skating gear. I don't go nowhere else. And also, I go and check out their weekly showcases where they have all music of all kinds there and they let these artists perform and get down all the time. Now, if you're interested in hitting up Royal Skating Apparel, make sure you go to 3429 Ridge Road in Lansing, Illinois. That is 3429 Ridge Road in Lansing, Illinois. Or you can always hit up GJ at 708-297-4596. That's 708-297-4596. Or you can go to their Facebook page at facebook.com backslash Royal SNA. Royal Skating and Apparel. Tell them right on radio sent you. Hey, Lorenzo Tomas here for Random Radio. Random Radio is looking to interview you. Yes, you. You could be like this guy. Yo, this is Dunk Williams of the 219. Or you could be like her. Hey, y'all, my name is Sherry Rose. Yeah, all you gotta do is email us at rrpshow at gmail.com and we'll set you up. It's that simple. And it's free. Did we mention that? Did we mention it was free? I just mentioned it, right? It's free. It's free. It'll cost you nothing. All you gotta do is send us 
and email to rrpshow at gmail.com today. Wait, there's more. Also, when we conduct the interview, you can send us one of your tracks and we'll play one of your songs during the interview. Yeah, it's just that simple. All of this for free. Email us at rrpshow at gmail.com. Sign up for your free interview today. What you got to lose? Hit us up. Right on radio. We'll talk to you soon, man. If you haven't done it yet, go like us on Facebook. That's right. Facebook.com slash RRP show. Facebook.com slash RRP show. Facebook.com slash RRP show. All right, make sure you guys check out uh, the Random Radio compilation, the Random Radio podcast show up right now at YouTube and SoundCloud. Great show. Check that out. Make sure you guys check out the Random Radio compilation album also up at YouTube and SoundCloud. All right, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to see you guys next week. We'll have another episode. You guys were great. Talk to you soon. Leave some messages in the comments. Random Radio. Yeah, boy. You are listening to Random Radio.